This is Boiler Doubt's QuickCast. I get to talk to a Purdue legend, an icon, if you will, of the Purdue family today. Let's talk about it. Mom, thanks for watching. So, hey, everybody. Hope you're doing well today. Um, so, last weekend, I thought it'd be great to have my pal Paul Sadler on the quick cast. Why not? And talk a little bit about what he does for the university and what he's done and how much of an important member of the team um, I think he is to Purdue basketball and football and the other sports as well. And so I reached out to him on Twitter and then uh, we traded text messages and he told me he was coming to the home stretch of his time at Purdue and that he's starting a new chapter. And he said, would it matter? Would you still want to talk to me? I said, of course, all you've done for the program. So today I get a chance to talk to him. You're, if, you, if you stay tuned in, you can see uh, my conversation with Paul Sadler and hear a little insight of what goes in behind the scenes to beautify the forward face of Purdue Athletics. Check out AJ's. They got 20 beers on tap, and when you are in West Lafayette, you know where to go for Boiled Sports' favorite burger. That's AJ's. EatAJ's.com. Before I do that, I wanted to talk a little bit about where our Boiler basketball team stands right now. If you look at the standings, they are... Um, what, one, two, three, four, five, sixth place, really, uh, they're tied in fifth with Wisconsin at nine and six in a pretty good place, and the it is official. The home stretch is upon us. Just four games left before the Big Ten tournament, Nebraska at Penn, at Nebraska at Penn State versus Wisconsin and versus IU. Um, as you probably read or heard here on the site, uh, Michael had some thoughts after the Michigan State win, kind of an ugly win, but a win nonetheless. And every one of them is super important, especially as you get ready for seeding. Uh, Purdue looks like they're in pretty good place. They're in between 23rd and 31st in most of the computer polls. Uh, they're no longer ranked. They don't deserve to be ranked. But uh, they are a darn solid team. And they're going to be a horrible out for somebody, a high rate, a high seeded team, come the tournament if they get past the first round. Also, um, Here's the thing. We all know this. The reason Purdue's playing such an ugly brand of basketball, they really can't shoot consistently. And the importance of Sasha Stefanovic it can't, be, can't be overstated. I believe Stefanovic will find his stroke again. I believe he's going to get his legs under him and start playing like the guy that we know he can be. But even when he's not shooting that well, he's still drawing good defenders. Look at the way Michigan State really tried to keep him from doing anything, honestly. They were blanketing him because they know his importance. Izzo knows his importance specifically. But Trey Williams was so darn huge in that game. And uh, so, was, so was a solid cast behind him. But next up, uh, they'll play at Nebraska uh, on the Big Ten Network at 5.30 on Saturday. Uh, until then, enjoy this uh, vignette, this conversation, this interview with Paul Sadler. And I appreciate you tuning in. Get a Purdue great or get one with one of the military branches on there from your friends and family or even another school. They have some other licenses. You know, there's only one school that matters to us, though, here. GridironMetalworks.com, our pals, Purdue people. Something I've wanted to do for a little bit, but I didn't really reach out to you, Paul. Um, I've got uh, a pal of mine, uh, Paul Sadler. He is a guy that you, if you don't know him uh, from Twitter or someplace else, you probably know his work since you're listening to this podcast. Paul is a, uh, um, I can let him tell you, but uh, he's been an integral part of the athletic department for years and uh, appreciate you coming on, Paul. Appreciate the introduction. I got to say, this is it's my first podcast, I think, ever. Well, excellent. Well, good. This is exclusive, boiled sports exclusive. This, this is big time. I finally made it. Yeah, yeah. This is huge. There, there'll be dozens of listeners. So dozens. It, yeah, wow. this is gonna really put wow. you on the map. You could, you could uh, tell your family that. Uh, All right, <laughs> call mom. Yeah. So, so tell everybody what your official title is and what you do day to day. For those who don't know, uh, and my official title uh, here in athletics is creative director hyphen design. 
because we we technically have two creative directors. We have a creative director over video too. Um, so I lead our design arm, which um, there is me and I have two designers, Larissa Leck and Chris Johnson, also that, that work for me. Well, um, I think we just handle all the day-to-day -day design needs in the department. I mean, everything you see for all the sports on social media, anything print related. I mean, we, there is basically nothing that we outsource from a graphics perspective. Well, from, from a guy who's in a related field, I've, as you know, I've done some graphics, but I'm primarily a, a primarily a, a product guy. Um, I know the amount of work you're doing takes an immense amount of time and, um, and it's, uh, uh, you guys do really, really good stuff. Uh, before we started re recording, I told Paul that one of the, the the things that he's done for the university that I've appreciated is um, number one, he's uh, he's been there. You said a decade, right? Started in 2011, so okay. um, yeah, I almost made it. To, I almost make it 10 years. Okay, well, that's 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 uh, it's excellent, and um, your work has been has been really good and consistent um, and, and it's grown and gotten better. Um, but one of the things you've done and, and we could, I'd love to talk to you about this is um, the ability to give players or, or uh, recruits uh, a feeling like they're part of something when they came on their down campus. Um, we we've seen, you know, countless examples of these guys, you know, they, they, you know, you guys have had some fun with the themes you put them in, backdrops that are cool, put them, uh, you know, in the uniform and they, they, I think they eat it up. Um, if you had an example, can you think of any example of, um, like one of those guys saying something to you where they just were excited to do that even before they, um, did it, does that ever happen where one of them said, Hey, this is a, you know, I saw this on, you know, on Twitter and I wanted to do this. Yeah, it, it does. I can't off the top of my head think of a specific example and and honestly i'm not too involved in those visits since we started them years and years ago it's yeah. um it's a lot of um uh, my designers and our photographer charles jiski that, that do the shoots and but i've heard stories from them where you know they have kids that i mean they eat it up they they want to try on every single piece of apparel we have and they i mean their families get involved and i mean yeah, they love cool. it yeah some of them some of them can care less some of them right I mean, so many schools do it nowadays that um, it might be getting old for some. I don't know. But. Well, so when, when you started it, um, and, and you and I talked about this before recording, um, I felt like it was something that was relatively new. Um, and you guys were really, really ahead of the game, making this something that it was really part of the recruiting process. So yeah. who, whose brainchild was that? Did somebody come to you? Did you see it someplace else? I, I know the industry's small and I see you guys always talk. Yeah. How did that come about? Um. I'm have to brag on myself here, which I don't normally like to do, but no, it's good. Uh, this will just be Purdue people listening to this. So hopefully yeah. nobody will call me out. But when I started here in 2011, we, we didn't do anything for recruiting. And I don't know many people in the industry that were, it wasn't something, there might've been a few here or there, especially at the big schools, but um, down the SEC, but um, it probably was a couple of years into it here where they started asking for stuff, uh, football specifically, you know, recruiting graphics to send kids. It just started catching on. And we never had photos of the kids to use in the graphics. So, I mean, you know, and being in the design business, it's when you're limited with your resources like that, it's really hard to, to make stuff. Um, so started thinking and um, started picking my, picking the brain of Charles Jiski. Uh, he was a, before he was a photographer here, he worked for the university. Um, and um we got our compliance officer involved and started asking questions like, you know, what can we get away with? Like, you know, if he, he's always interested in seeing how you can permissibly get something done within the, within the rules <laughs> uh, by being creative. So um, we started exploring ways where when a kid came on a visit, we, we would have a studio set up or something that was part of the visit and, pop the kid in there, you get a professional photo, the kid makes his day, he makes him feel like a superstar. Um, and then we have going forward, high quality professional studio lit images of this kid. Oh, and we yeah. can start making graphics for him, just like we make for the, you know, the student athletes that are here already. So right, right. I feel like they're already part of it. Um, yeah, it's cool. It, it it kinda, signing I, I didn't know anybody else that was really doing it because when, when signing day graphics started, nobody had good photos of the kids. Like right. it was, the graphics were sick, but photos were just so pardon my language. Um, no, that's all right. 
I like to think we were one of the, the beginners of that trend. And, and now it's pretty much a standard. I mean, everybody's got every, every visit does photo shoots. I'm sure. I mean, it, it they rewrote the, uh, the compliance rule books. I'm sure. I don't know specifically what it says you're allowed, but it used to be very strict and they've evolved it so that you can do stuff like that. Yeah. Well, so you do, you wear a lot of hats. I know that, um, uh, number one, I, I want to compliment you on something and, um, publicly, uh, sure. I think one of the, the, the biggest things you've done is you've created a team that, uh, number one, you guys are fun to interact with on Twitter. Uh, Chris and I go back and forth. Uh, sounds like he's an excellent cook. Hopefully one day. Uh, he's, a piece, be able he's a piece of work. To, yeah, he's, he's amazing. And a fashion plate. I mean, that's the thing. The way he dresses <laughs> is killer. Um, but you've, you've, you've created a team and a culture that I've seen people come in and out of your team. Um, and they've gone on to do other things. And uh, one of your uh, little birds just uh, is doing her own thing right now, right? Um, am I, I get that Ashley right? McCaffrey, yeah, she's, she yeah. Was a, took a big time job at Kansas and now she's moving on and, and uh, doing her own thing and already killing it from, from yeah. what I hear. Well, I think, I think one of the things, and I don't, I don't know any of the plans after, um, uh, after you're officially gone, um, I don't know who who is going to be able to either hire or interview effectively the way you've done. You've done a great job at that because I've always thought you're good at your job, but the next step is the team you put your, uh, put around you and you have put good people, good talented people who, if um, I know they're not all boilermakers, but they uh, espouse like kind of a Purdue way and a Purdue culture. And whether it's uh, uh, the, the photographers or the designers, and I know they do a little bit of both, um, you, you just put a great team together and, and it's easy. I always say it's great when we have players on campus that are easy to root for. And similarly, when that athletic department and, and the creative part is doing a good job, it's really fun to be near it and behind it. So you have done a great job at that. I want to tell you that. I appreciate it. I, I don't think of myself as a, as a good manager at all. Like I actually don't like management at all. <laughs> I'm, I'm Probably always doing it. I'd, I'd rather be a worker bee and just put my head down and get stuff done. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I mean, I'm, I'm proud of everyone that's come through here and where they've gone. Like they've gone into some big time roles and uh, makes me proud inside to see that happen. I, I don't know how I had anything to do with it, but <laughs> they're yeah. doing well. Well, so of your, of the many things you do uh, at Purdue, mm -hmm. um, what's the thing you like to do most? I, I, um, it seems to me you're uh, you're a pretty gifted photographer, uh, but what do you what do you like to do most? What's the best part of the job? Oh man, that's a tough question. <laughs> um, the things I like most are probably the most boring things that nobody else wants to do. I mean, I'm a I'm an old guy. I, I come, you know, I'm, I'm, I've come from a graphic design background growing up. My mom's a graphic designer, so I, I grew up around it. I, I was doing it in high school and went to college for it. So, you know, I, I love things with typography. I love laying out like our, I don't know if you've ever seen our forge magazine that we do yeah, for yeah. John Purdue club. Right. I mean, that's, that's one of my favorite projects to do every few months. I mean, I, I love editorial design. I love clean communication pieces. Um, that type of stuff gets me excited. I'm, I'm not like a lot of the designers you see in athletics and stuff that, that are the photo up gurus like i'm not really that good in that stuff i can i can get around fine and and make stuff that that's serviceable but it's not what i excel at <laughs> so that well you and i you and i had yeah, a little i'm an uh, indesign mini... junkie not a photoshop junkie right 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 <laughs> regardless of what your tools are and what's your favorite you, you do a really good job and um, thank you and you've created i think one of the big things it, uh, some of the people that are watching this really don't know what i do for a living either i'm a shoe designer and so I always talk about, you know, the main thing you're doing as a designer is you're communicating ideas, right? And so you've done a good job coming uh, across with a unifi unified face. Purdue now, when they see Purdue athletics, it looks like Purdue athletics. And it doesn't matter if it's basketball, volleyball, football. You've done a very, very good job at that. And I know Thank that you. is not accidental and not easy. So I yeah. uh, appreciate that. Yeah, and we went back and forth with that over the years. I'm early in my uh, and I'm sure you remember seeing things, but earlier in my career here, every every sport used to have its own little campaign or or marketing look, which was fine. It, it, it let them get their voice out there, but mm -hmm. it, it always kind of bugged me because there wasn't that unified brand. So we've slowly been over the years trying to 
get things strengthened up. So they're more unified across the board, but they still can kind of speak their own message in some right. way or another. Right. Well, and speaking of brand, and I don't know, we didn't, we didn't pre-talk about what you're okay with here, but um, can you tell everybody what you're, where you're going next? Because um, I'm excited because um, it, you, you're going to be working with one of the most handsome people in, in Indiana. Uh, I'll go, I'll go ahead and tell you. Cause I, my, I mean, people that follow me on Facebook and my friends and stuff. All they already know. know. Okay. Um, I just didn't put it on Twitter because okay. I know I thought maybe he'd like to have some fun with it, but um, I'll okay. go ahead and tell you. And then he can tell me if he wants to edit this out and do it okay. himself. All right. All right. But um, yeah, uh, um, over the last year or so, I've become good friends with uh, Mr. Derek Diltz, who a lot of Boilermaker fans might know. He He's the owner and operator of Gridiron Metalworks and um, the company that small company he started last year. He's been in the metal industry for mint for his whole life, it seems. But um yeah, he's, he started that and he's, he's growing and um, looking for more creative help. And we started talking and he, he invented a position that he thinks I'd help him with and I'm going to go work for him. Cool. That's and I'm good. looking forward I, to it. Yeah. I'm uh, it's an exciting opportunity. Yeah. You talked about off, off the recording, how it's a good opportunity for you to go work small business. And as yeah. a, I, I've been a small business guy for 20 years and, man, to me, there's nothing better. Like, honestly. Okay. Yeah. Um, once I, uh, right out of college, I got a job in healthcare yeah. marketing and I worked there for a big healthcare organization for eight and a half years or so. And yeah. it, it was a great job. I learned a lot. Then I came to Purdue athletics in 11 and been doing that for 10 years. So uh, for my whole life after college, I'd been in these big corporations and I'm just I'm excited to go and work for a smaller brand, a smaller team. The, the funny thing about Derek and, and Gridiron Metalworks is that before um, he was really off the ground, um, I just loved what he was doing. And he started putting this stuff on Twitter and I started talking it up and, um, and we weren't, he wasn't sponsoring us. Um, mm -hmm. And I just talked to him on the side. I'm like, dude, this is great. I love that you're doing this. I think this stuff looks so good. And now do you have some of the grill grates. But yeah, I do. I, in fact, yeah. I've got, so I've got the one that has a griddle. Um, yeah. And then I've got the, they're so just, nice. I mean, the oh, quality of them are when I saw them in person for the first time, I'm like, damn, these are, these are great. Duty. Yeah. <laughs> and, I'm and excited to, to nerd out about that stuff because I honestly don't know that much about the side. I mean, I'm coming in to help them from a design and marketing brand yeah. perspective, yeah. photography perspective, but I'm excited to, to get my hands dirty and show me the machines and I want to learn how everything works. <laughs> well, so in design, so I find it fascinating. I yeah, it's super fascinating, but mm -hmm. in design, there are a couple things you really can't fake, right? You cannot fake heritage, which you, as a, as a designer for Purdue for years, you, you know that Purdue had, there's some things we are and some things we're not right. Um, but we have a deep history. You can't, if you're a young, whatever entity, you can't fake that. And so you've done a good job on that side, really kind of digging in deep into the heritage. And you've done some things in the pre-games that have focused and reached back, which I thought were great. And they, some of them, I mean, as a fan, give me, give me chills still. I mean, like, you know, like seeing some of the guys uh, playing that, that I was watching live as a kid, you know, um, and then seeing them juxtaposed against the new guys. That was always cool. But the other thing is when you have something that's super high quality, and this is something, you know, like I would say, again, with Purdue, you've got a very good product, right? I mean, you've got some pretty cool things. You can't fake quality. And that's the thing that you have at your next job too. The way they make stuff is awesome. And um, yeah, uh, and I think you have a very good opportunity to, and I, and you will, I think you'll really, you'll take that to another level, but I'm excited about the next chapter. And um, uh, for those who don't know out there, um, you're not, a, you're not, you haven't been a Boilermaker forever. Um what, 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 before, before you were wearing black. I have gold, been a Boilermaker forever. I just didn't go to school here. Okay. Okay. So, <laughs> um, so you grew I, I grew up, up in Lafayette, then. Indiana. Yeah, okay. I've grown up, I've grown up in Mackey. My dad um, used to take me to um, games my whole life. Okay. Um, grew up watching Conzo and Big Dog. And were you close enough you could walk to the games? Were you that close? No, we lived in Lafayette. So other side of the river. Okay. okay. Um, yeah. West Lafayette was, was a, uh, a mile or a world away for me growing up. Like, so when you <laughs> went, when you went to college and you went to ball state, you were yeah, still, I wanted to go to life. Purdue. Yeah. I wanted to go to Purdue. I, um, that was my plan. I, I wanted to, um, wasn't sure what I wanted to major in. I mean, yeah. graphic design was what I knew. Right. And, um, I think my mom wanted me to 
to experience something different and get out of town for for a little while. So yeah, she convinced me to to check out Ball State and um, actually went there to go into architecture. Um, did not realize how hard it was to get into architecture school, so I didn't get accepted the first year and yeah. uh, said, "Okay, I'll do the graphic design thing." Well, you and I, and I don't, I don't think we've talked about this, have we? I was actually going to go to Ball State before I went to Purdue. Oh yeah, I was, I was accepted in a Ball State's architecture program. I, um, oh, you were, huh? Well, well, with a caveat. So here, here, are my three that I was looking at, I had Miami of Ohio for architecture, Ball State for architecture, and Purdue. I didn't know what it was, but I was a Purdue fan, and I was like, I think I should go to Purdue. <laughs> and so, <laughs> so um, I was accepted to Ball State and Miami, and I decided to enroll at Miami, and then I took my day on campus at Purdue and learned about industrial design, which I had never heard about. Yeah. As a kid, I always drew. So I drew cars and planes and houses and, you know, uh, athletes, you know, I just, I drew and mm-hmm. the, uh, the, the head of the industrial design department, Purdue, um, gave me the, uh, soft sell. He told me it was very hard to get a job coming out of Purdue in industrial design. And I love the fact he wasn't giving me a stick or a spiel. He was just telling me this is going to be difficult and you're gonna have to work at it. And I was like, I've always been a grinder. So I was like, all right. Challenge you accepted. Do the, the Matt Painter sales pitch. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> it is the Matt Painter sales pitch. He, he never told me I had to play defense to get, to get in the game though. So, uh, <laughs> but that's the thing that I think that's, there's a psychology there, right? There's a certain type of person who loves the Matt Painter sales pitch. Right. Mm-hmm. And, and, yeah. they, and that's the guy who fits at Purdue. And that's the, you know, it, it's weird when Painter went away from that for a couple of years, how detrimental it was to the program um, but now he has guys that when they come in, they understand, you know, you gotta, you gotta work here. You know, this isn't about, you know, just looking pretty and, you know, raining jumpers, you know, you gotta, yeah. you gotta grind. Do you root for ball state at all then? Or no. <laughs> Any ball state people watching this? Or? Well, I've got a I, couple I, friends. So, so, so they, there might be. while I was at ball state, uh-huh. I didn't go to a single sporting event. Wow. Um, I came home to go to Purdue games actually sometimes. Um, Did Purdue I went play Ball State t- at all when you were on campus? I can't remember. Not at Ball State. I can't remember if I played here or not. Yeah. I know um, they came close to beating us one year. I can't remember if I was still in school or not. Yeah, yeah. Here. Um, but when I was at Ball State, we had the nation's longest losing streak in football. I think it was something like 27 games straight we've lost. It was there, there. And uh, I tailgated a lot, but we never went into the game. And yeah. we finally did win, and they – they tore down the goalpost and threw it in the pond. I was, <laughs> I was, I was more concerned about what Purdue was doing. I didn't really pay much attention to the Ball State side, but uh, I'll let my buddy Peyton Stovall see that he's a Boilermaker now, and he'll kill me. <laughs> well, my my brother's a uh, he's a Butler uh, Bulldog. He graduated from Butler, and he could never bring himself to root for Butler when they played Purdue because yeah. he was like you are. He was clearly brainwashed, right? And he couldn't, it was deep in there. It, you know, it's, it's the uh, kind of the foundational stuff in there. Well, it's, it's such a different thing because the nostalgia that I have for Purdue, and I'm only, you know, I'm an hour and 10 minutes away door to door. When I come to, you know, I come to Purdue in the summer when nobody's there just to be on campus. Like my kids and I during uh, COVID lockdown um, came up there, rode bikes around campus just because. I'm so fond of the place. My wife and I started dating in high school, but really we became who we are as a couple on Purdue's campus, you know? Yeah. And so those things, some of my best friends that I've got came from Purdue and um, Jay from the site. Uh, he and I uh, worked at Kerry Quad in the grill in the night spot together. Appreciate uh, you coming on here and being willing to be on this. Um, appreciate what you've done. I don't, done. Know, why, I don't know why you waited till I am leaving Purdue. I know, 10 years. I know. I actually didn't. I didn't know. <laughs> On Saturday, when I talked to you, I didn't know you were leaving yet. So um, I yeah, just thought I it was a good that was, idea. That was a funny, you sent me that message and I'm like, um, what do you want me to talk about? Because I actually might be leaving. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe maybe now that you're um, you're not working for the university, if you want to come on again, you're welcome. Maybe you and Derek can both come on here. And um, oh. Derek has one of the best, he and uh, Jay from this site are two of the normal laymen that I know that can really, they both have good pipes. Uh, oh yeah. Your Twitter handle is at Paul Sadler, right? No, it's Sadler Images is actually Sadler. what it is. Okay. Yeah. At Sadler Images, if you want to look him up. Um, but uh, Paul is a, he's a bourbon man. Uh, he is a. Uh, I'm Which gonna, bourbon I'm night gonna, tonight? Huh? It's bourbon night tonight. Oh, it's bourbon night tonight. Is it? Is, right. it, is Thursday always bourbon night? Or I try? I try and wait till Thursday if I can. Okay. okay. <laughs> All right. 
See, I'll say me and Derek had this conversation the other day because we both like our bourbon. Yeah. I've never really had a bourbon I didn't like. <laughs> <laughs> you put two in front of me and and I probably I probably wouldn't pass the Pepsi taste test challenge. <laughs> um, now, if it has scotch in it, if it's like a scotch blend, uh, I'm, I'm not a big scotch fan. So, so I'm not either. Taste- I'm not either. <laughs> It's got to be a well-behaved scotch because that peatiness, I can't handle it. Can I? Yeah. Okay. Um, so you're going to miss the yeah. national championship producing again. You're just going to miss that. Uh, I'm not going to miss it. I'll, I'll be there one way or another. You're going to be making the posters. <laughs> I, I will lie. I'm a little bit excited to, to be a fan again. I mean, cool. I know everybody wants to be down there on the court or on the mm-hmm. field, but it, it's a, I mean, basketball, basketball is a good view. Football on the field is not a good view to watch football. No, no. Um, Cause it's just too much space, right? Yeah. You can't everything. I mean, you can't, See, you, you, if once they get past the 50, you don't know if they're at the 50 or at the 10. You just can't yeah. tell. <laughs> yeah. Hey, one, one last question. I should have fit this in yeah. earlier. You, you've set up some cameras in interesting places. Is there any one of, did you, did you set a camera in the rafters at Mackey or maybe any time in the NCAA tournament where, uh, and I don't know how you are about heights, but some of the pictures I've seen, they terrify me just to look at the picture. So What's that setup like? You didn't see the one on, you didn't see the one I put on Twitter last IU game we hosted. That was the last game I worked. Yeah. Me and Charles put up a camera up there. Oh, it's high uh, there. It's that was right before COVID, before before we went to Big Ten tournament. We hosted IU here. That was the last yeah. game I photographed. Heights don't bother me. Falling bothers me, but not <laughs> <laughs> well, it wouldn't bother you long from that height. You're gonna be it's gonna be over. Um that that's the thing. Like I get on a ladder if my feet are taller than my head normally is, which is five foot four, you know, I'm way up there. Literally, I start gribbing that ladder so hard. So being up there on a catwalk, like I, I saw a guy at Butler two years ago, I was at a game there and he was up there and they have a really, it looks, it looks like it's not up to code now. I can tell you that much. Yeah. Um, but it's, I, yeah, I it, couldn't do it boggles my mind how, how scared of heights some people are like, cause I, I never really think of it. I probably do dumb stuff with heights, but. All right, man. Well, I'm going to, I'm uh, uh, good talking to you and uh, appreciate having you on. We'll, we'll, we'll All right. Stay in touch. So thanks buddy. Right. Today's quick cast is brought to you by Martin vintage. We enter boiled at checkout. Martinvintage.com. Hope you enjoyed the conversation. Appreciate you tuning in today. Have a great day. God bless you. Hammer down. March will be here before we know it. Thanks for tuning in to the Boiled Sports Podcast Network. Boiled Sports, BS all the time.